Today we're going to talk about the uh, pulse systems, mechanical advantage pulse systems, raising systems. We're going to run through a modified version of the Arizona progression, um, running through a uh, like Georgia Hall with a redirect through um, three to ones into a compound nine. Then we'll take a look, take a look at the inherent difference between uh, two to one or even numbers against, uh, say, like odd numbers on three to one, uh, five, seven, nine to one. So we're going to start out with some of the hardware that we use. Let's bring it in a little bit. We're going to take a look at some of our pulleys here. So pulleys come in all different shapes and sizes. This is the Iraq Exotica pulley. It's a triple action. As so far as I've got to press the plate and uh, or press the little button, slide the plate open and press it and slide it again. Very nice pulley, high efficiency, 36 kilonewtons or 8,000 pounds. And it's got a swivel. So that was me to load it hands free. Compared to a prussic mining pulley, prussic mining designed to run where the prussics has this straight edge. Rock Exotica also has it just on the one side. Um, but you get uh, such as the Petzl, a uh, prussic mining pulley, pulley, slide the gate open, place it on the line. Then we come into rescue pulleys, big, large, heavy steel rescue pulleys. These are from CMC with a four inch sheath, very high efficiency um, and rated, like I said, for a rescue load. This one is a Beckett pulley. Here's the Beckett down at the bottom or a double pulley insofar as it has two sheaths through the middle. Prussic minding, um, Beckett pulley. Again, double pulley, has the Beckett on the bottom. And um, then we have an ID. Some persons might think the ID is out of place amongst these pulleys. But the truth is you can utilize an ID to obtain the same configuration in the Z-Rig as you would for a, a three to one mechanical advantage. You're not gonna get a three to one because of there's no uh, moving wheel in the bottom, just a cam that's gonna create friction. You're gonna be closer to around a two to one when you build a three to one with it. The rescue senders are hard grabs. Um, work on a camming action, more mechanical. Uh, essentially pitching on the rope. Uh, so, our soft grabs work on more of a, um, we're pretty familiar with those, but just a cinching action. Our pressics will start to slip around 3,000. In the ballpark, 3,000 pounds, and we'll eventually catch. Um, these can eventually, if loaded hard enough, um, damage the rope. Um, the ones we do want to avoid using on the hull system are like our, um, our hand descenders with the sharp teeth. Uh, those we want to keep away from heavy loading situations. So, cost, obviously these are a lot more expensive. Um, then the Pressic is a lot, a lot cheaper to grab as well. Pull number one. You create a mechanical advantage is when you're utilizing pulleys and connectors, if you add a pulley into the system, does the pulley move? So when we look at this pulley, this pulley here is attached to our anchor point and it doesn't move. So in this case, we do not have a mechanical advantage. In order for the pulley to move, it would need to be attached to the load. Once I establish if my pulley moves, let's say it does, and then I want to count, my, my, estimate my mechanical advantage. I'm going to count the legs to the load. Here is our load. We have one line going to the load. So we have a mechanical advantage of one to one. Basically no mechanical advantage whatsoever. In fact, we have friction. And all that is doing is allowing us to change our direction of pull. Allowing me to pull towards the load instead of standing on the other side and pulling away from the load, all right? So that's our mechanical advantage. If you can vision this in the vertical, it would allow me to pull down instead of otherwise pulling up. What it does have on it are these two crossings. These are very important. As you can see, my working end is still under tension. So my crossings here serve as a progress capture so that when I haul on the line and I release, it captures my progress. 
So if I have 200 pounds on this line, that means in order to raise him, in order to affect travel, I have to apply a force of 200 pounds on this line. That means if I have 200 pounds on this, and 200 pounds on this, at my anchor point, I have 400 pounds of force. You need to take that into consideration. You need to understand that, that whatever I apply here means I have to have the same here, and therefore, whatever I apply here is doubled here. Make sense? So, we have three basic um, types of mechanical advantage. We have simple, we have compound, and we have complex. Under the NFPA 1006, under Chapter 5, the JPRs, if you specialize in something, such as MVC or motor vehicle collision response, you have to know how to build a simple 3 to 1, for example. At the um, rope rescue tech level 1, you have to know how to build a compound system. So we're going to take a look at simple systems, and then we're going to work through compound systems. The first thing I'm going to do is attach a grab to my line, or I can bypass it and just attach straight into this carabiner, but I'm not going to. I'm going to attach a grab to the line. That's going to allow me variations. It's going to allow me to change certain things. I bring that to where I want. Let's say Todd might be there over the edge of a building. I might not be able to connect to him. I'm going to add in a pulley, and now you see that the pulley moves. Back to our first two rules. Rule number one, does the pulley move? In this case, yes. Rule number two, how many legs to the load? This becomes our load point. We have one leg, two legs, three legs into the load. Therefore, we have a mechanical advantage of three to one. Attach it directly to Todd himself. You can see there's our three legs to the load on mechanical advantage. The problem with doing this like this is in order to raise Todd up 100 feet, I have to have 300 feet of rope. If I'm getting mechanical advantage of three to one, I have to pay back. And that means I need to pull three times the actual distance that he will travel. As you watch here, as I raise this, I will travel a lot further than Todd does. And down slow. In order to affect the lower, I have to manage. Go down slow. I have to manage the cross X. And I can just let it down slow. Then if I let go of the progress capture on the cross X, keep on going. It will self lock. Okay. Let's re affect. Our three to one through the process. Now, I want to convert this into a compound nine. Let's take a look at some of the things, some of the options that I have. The next pulley, if I add one in the system, has to get added at the anchor point. Really nowhere else for it to go. There it is. <laughs> then I'd be building a complex, would that be a complex nine? Complex nine. Look at up, we're not going to talk about that. That's for a different lesson on a different day. So, I'm going to add another pulley. To my anchor system. And what's my mechanical advantage now? Let's ask the two questions. Does that pulley move? No. Therefore, I did not increase the mechanical advantage. How many legs to the load? One two, three. Therefore, I still have a three to one. So even though I've added a pulley, all I've done once again is change my direction of pull. If, however, I now add a pulley at this low point, I have two options. I can add it directly here. 
Now I've added a pulley that moves. So I've increased it. How many legs to the load? One, two, three, four, five. I have a mechanical advantage of five to one. All right? What happened to four to one? We'll get there. So bring it in. Look how much line I've got to pull to affect movement on top. Barely moving, and I'm taking up a lot of line here. Ready on down? Down slow. All right. If I only had the one pulley, but Todd had just made a rescue, and I was all by myself, the five to one mechanical advantage might not be enough. So, I have the option, utilizing the compound system, to create a mechanical advantage of nine to one. And instead of attaching it on that former process, I'm now going to attach it on the last, I'd say running end, but I guess it's still a working end, leg of my haul system. And what I have, if you can see this, depending how good Sandy's camera work is, is right here, I have a three to one pulling on a three to one. There's a three to one. And right there, just these three legs, is another three to one. So we say three times three, not three plus three, three times three gives us nine. So I've gone from a five to one, positioning the pulley here instead of here, and now I can, with one pinky, resist. I can bring Todd in with no effort whatsoever. But I have to pull through a lot of rope. I have to pull through nine feet of rope now to affect one foot of travel. All right? Simple to compound. Okay. I'm going to take a quick break here. Then we're going to look at the simple two to one. How the two to one differs from the uh, uh, three to one and how to turn that into a compound six to one.